Hello ladies and gents, in this video we will talk about OData v2 in UI5. OData, which stands for Open Data Protocol, is just a set of standards for developing and consuming RESTful APIs, which in return provides a unified interface for data sources. Now instead of getting our data from a local JSON model like we did before, let's connect to a remote server, which will be an OData service and get our products list from there. Now, if you're not familiar with OData at all, I highly recommend you to check the official website here, odata.org, and just read the getting started part here. To create an instance of an OData service, we go to odata.org slash OData services. We select v2, since we will be using version 2, and version 4 we will talk about later. And we simply click on this OData read write and it will create a unique instance for us, an OData service. And let's copy this URL and go back to our app. And we go to our manifest.json. And here inside sap.app, we create a new entry named data sources. And let's create a new one. First, we give it a name. I will name it main service since this will be the main service for our application. And we need to specify the URI here. We can just paste the URL of our new service. And next we need to specify the type as OData. And lastly, let's create a setting here and set the OData version as 2.0, which we are using. Now using our new main service, let's go to models and create a new model. And as the model name, I will just give an empty string since this will be the default model of our app. And here we begin with the data source, which is main service. And then let's add another setting for our model and set use batch to false to disable batch mode and we will enable this later on and see what it does. Now since we have added a new model, we should see a new metadata request when our app loads. So let's check our app. I will open the developers console and on the network tab, let's type in all data here. And if we refresh our page, here indeed we see the metadata call, but it's failing due to the same origin policy. So it's blocked by our browser, but we can uh, overcome this by using again the UI5 tooling and we can create a new custom middleware. So let's first stop our app and install an NPM package. So we say NPM install and the name of the package is UI5 middleware dash simple proxy and we save it as a dev dependency so dash dash save dash dev and we start our app again and let's go to our ui5.yaml file and add our new custom middleware we already had one for the library load so below that we say name which will be UI5 middleware simple proxy and the after middleware will be again compression and now we need to specify a mount path and we will use slash all data this name is up to us and we will use it in a second and now we need some configuration. Configuration here, and we need to specify the base URI for our proxy. So, where we want the proxy to forward our requests, which will be let's check our service again. This part right here, the base URL of our service. 
and then to overcome the same origin policy we need to add an http header to our requests which is named access control allow origin and we will set it to an asterisk between single quotes and now inside our manifest.json file instead of directly pointing to our remote service here in our data source we need to point to our proxy here so i will copy this mount path and switch this part here with our new mount path and this way let's say our proxy will catch the requests that start with this path basically and then it will do its job and add this http header and forward our request to this instead now if we go back to app refresh i can already see it's not failing anymore and now we have our metadata so our model has been loaded and it's ready to use now let's check the entity sets here we have one named products which we are going to use so let's copy the name of this entity set and go back to our app and the first thing i will do here is to remove these filters and sorters we added in the previous video because we no longer have a field named inactive in our remote service so this would fail anyway and next thing we will use the products entity set here so let's paste that and now since our model is the default model so it has no name that means we don't need a model name here so i will also remove this part here and we also need to fix all other bindings here for now let's simply remove all the model names here we delete save and if we check our app again now we have more products which are coming from our remote service now now let's check a few things uh, with our new data service if we check the metadata or we can check it here and we take a look at the entity type you see there is no currency so we just have to hard code it let's go back to the app and here's our currency field let's hard code it for now and we no longer have with height depth so i will get rid of this attribute as well let's save this is looking better and as you see we no longer have the release date but we do have that field actually but the reason it's not working is remember we had to use a custom source pattern for our date binding so it's here release date and its type of date time so all we need to do here is just remove this source pattern here format options are still valid and now we also have the release date and the category here is uh, unknown since we haven't implemented that but that's for another video to come since it's not a part of our entity set here named products so if we check the metadata and you can see it's a navigation property and we will add this in another video let's finally go back to our app and remove our old model from manifest.json so we don't need this model anymore we delete and from our model folder let's also remove the json file and now instead of a json file our products are coming from our new remote service and if we check this request here in the developers console we can see the products that we see here so we first one is bread then low fat milk which is the description name is milk etc that would be all for this video and in the next video we will talk about pagination and count mode in odata v2 so i will see you there